Why do wheels in videos sometimes start to change their direction and their speed, even though the direction of the car stays the same? If you like science, consider subscribing. Look at these two wheels. The left wheel rotates clockwise, while the right wheel rotates counterclockwise. We also see that the right wheel rotates faster than the left wheel. To really be sure how they rotate, let's take notes to them and see what happens. Both notes rotate now in the same fashion, counterclockwise and faster than the wheels. So how does this make sense? Well, the wheels actually rotate with the same speed and direction as the note, which gets clear when we color the wheels for a moment. How can we explain this? Between two frames, the wheels rotate for a certain angle, but we don't see that. The information in between the frames is lost through the sampling process, and our brain puts the missing pieces together. For example, if you see this point in these two positions across two frames, you will assume that it moves from position A to position B along the shortest path and not along some weird trajectory. But in reality, we don't know what happened between the frames. There is an infinite amount of possible trajectories that fit the frames. Additionally to that, wheels are also symmetrical, so their pattern repeats itself after a specific angle. In our case, the right wheel repeats its pattern every 12 degrees, while the left one repeats every 18 degrees, so we can't distinguish between 1, 19 or 37 degrees. Because of all of this, we see the wheels rotating for the smallest plausible angle, so even though they rotate with 16 degrees per frame, we see the right one rotating with 4 degrees per frame, and the left one with minus 2 degrees per frame, because those are the smallest angles that fit the frames. So whether this tire rotates with 20, 80 or 140 degrees per frame, the frames will be the same, and we will see how it rotates with the lowest speed. This phenomenon is known as aliasing, where a signal gets indistinguishable or an alias of another signal. To avoid this, we have to follow the Nyquist-Shannon sampling rule, which basically tells us if we want to properly represent an analog signal with a digital one, we have to sample it with a at least two times higher frequency than the highest frequency in its spectrum. It is not so obvious to apply this rule for more complex signals like digital images or videos. If we look again at our wheels, they rotate with a frequency of around 1.3 Hz, but because of their symmetry, the right wheel repeats its pattern with a frequency of 40 Hz, and the left one with around 27 Hz. So to properly record them, we need more than 80 frames per second for the right one, and more than 54 frames per second for the left one. It is interesting when we set the frame rate to be the same as the signal frequency. In this case, it looks like the wheels are still standing, while when the frame rate is exactly two times lower, we can see that the wheels are rotating fast, but we don't know in which direction. Could you survive a falling elevator if you jump just before the elevator hits the ground? Find out in this video here, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like.